problem that we had was the way the Territorial Rights Act was done. The Territorial Rights Act gave the appearance of wrapping up soul. That's what George Power would have to believe. But because I was working with Commissioner McDonald, Commissioner Everett, who happened to pass that law, the question was very simple. I said, did you intend for them to quash technology with the Territorial Rights Act? And the answer is no. So the reality is the Territorial Rights Act never contemplated someone did it. No. I said, so it was obvious to me at that time that George Soul and George Power wasn't going to quit what they were going to do. In fact, right after this, I've got another one with Nick Coltrane, a reporter over here, a reporter who got an interview with Paul Bauer. Paul Bauer said he defined that a little more clearly for what Nick meant. And um, he said that renewables may have 2% to 4% of our market by 2062. Oh, oh, 50 oh, years from now. Yeah. Well, I'd have those. I mean, I'd just take a look at that old redneck. I just said, I'm not going to hear anymore. So we filed this that you see up here. I wrote this, and it essentially is a petition to the Public Service Commission to, we wanted them to consider our request to become a solar utility. What we said that we feel is that, first off, you cannot fail to move in the best interest of your rate payers. Now, I think, I'm in a, I think as a group, my sense is that if I can go stick dumb semiconductors in the middle of the field that never does anything but transform photons into electricity as opposed to a coal fire plant, and I can do it for less money, I think that's in my best interest. And this is where you have to sort of step back and say, okay, let's get the timing within its context. Five years ago, you couldn't do that. Five years ago, it did not make financial sense. It made environmental sense didn't make financial sense. Now we have a position that it makes financial sense, it makes a load of environmental sense, and its ability to yield electricity over the long term at a price that drags down the cost of coal, because it's a simple matter of physics. You can't take a system that requires coal to generate electricity and ever really expect to compete with something that has no fuel cost. Can't do it. Now that the price structures are the way they are on the efficiency chart. Yes. So what we ask you to do is this. After a long conversation as to what they did, and essentially we concluded that the problem with solar development at stake then was George Power and the management of the power. One thing we didn't do, we didn't mince our words. And we told them, and I put together Numerous financial uh, examples, backing up what I'm saying. And the last thing I did, I gave a conclusion in which I simply said that pending our proof of financial uh, viability, technical competence. What we want to do is reach inside George Powers, control what they think they have over solar technology, and peel it out. Let them keep the base load. Let them keep the coal. Let them keep the new But let go of that technology. And let's go put it in another company right there beside it that has all the rights of a regulated utility. Because there's a, there's a key component to this. By being a regulated utility and being a monopoly, you can flow bonds. And when you can flow bonds, you can get money between 3 to 5 percent, all you want. And what we're simply asking is for, for us to take a mirror image of George Power, in fact, I use the term mirror image in here, a mirror image of George Power, peel out the solar technology and drop it in there. Because if you think for one second, because George Power argued that, well, our, our shareholders are ones that are funding it funding these capital purchases. And if you think for one second that your full faith and credit as ratepayers of this state is an underwriting that nuclear power plant, you're wrong. It is. They couldn't borrow a nickel without your 